it's me julia i am back again with another kiln opening a little bit late it's only been it's been about two weeks um but anyway so i'm not gonna waffle on i'm just gonna get straight to it i was hoping to get one of my lady feminine vases in uh but it was a bit tall so next one i'm gonna have three so three four and five in there so I had the tiniest little sneaky sneakiest peak but I couldn't really see anything other than the one thing that's on the, the top half shelf and I only had like a one second look just that was it so I'm quite excited I have been experimenting with some jungle gems because my little class group of girls that I go to on a Tuesday we had a little trip out to a local pottery store about 30 miles away and uh, got a few bits and pieces for our group and a couple of bits for myself so without further ado I'm going to get into it okay <gasps> okay yes okay have you so far right I'll just get the first piece out Surprisingly, actually, it was the day before yesterday and there's still a little bit of warmth in it. So this first piece, we're going on a cherry theme again, um, it was a slip cast mould I got and I really didn't know what to do with it because it was such a weird shape. It's like a real, quite deep for a plate, it's almost kind of pasta ballish and it warped a little bit. Um, but I'll show you the back. So big cherries on the front going with the cherry theme, which I really, really love at the minute. And then mini cherries on the back. And I did this like a little dot pattern in here. Can you see this really weird shape? I don't know if I cut it right or don't know. But anyway, this is what it turned out like. And I did the cherry colours, the red and the green in there. Again, same as last time. It looks a little pinker or orange on the screen there, but it is actually red. But I am thinking now, do I want to make the cherries look a little flat? And I'm wondering if, if I do cherries again, should I try to do the like little white bit on to make it like a bit 3D, a little bit of shading i'm no artist you know home hands up draw and paint like a two-year-old love holding a brush um which you know pottery's gonna hold brushes for but i quite like my placement of cherries on that i started you can kind of see where i started in a pattern and then went out and then did the edges so yeah i'm not um unhappy with that I really quite like it and I think it would actually make having that little kind of deep bit in there a nice pasta plate you can see how it's kind of slumpy it warpy sorry but I don't mind it like that yeah it's really quite warped I was going to just use it as a mould, a slump mould, but it was already a little bit warped. So whether I try it again or not, I'm not sure. Maybe as a, maybe just use the mould because I, th I think it, it, it's like that. So maybe just use the mould as a, a slump mould and to try it that way. Because I'm really not sure what's going on here. So leave that one for now. Okay, take that shelf out because I have two and a half shelves. Oh, wow, I totally forgot that was on there. There's a couple of bits that were on the shelf for a while that I really, you know, forgotten about. And so, let's talk about the noise. Okay, so first of all, I'll just get these out. Oh no, how are they going to separate? Yes. Because I've put these into the glaze fire, these little bits for my 
mosaic. So this is my toasted clay. And I did like a knit pattern. So these will all hopefully separate. And um, I'm going to do jungle jumps on them. And then I have these tulip shapes in that same. But yes, they're all separating. So tulip shapes that I might do some jungle gems on as well. But Sheila from the Netherlands gave me an idea of a daffodil colour, which I'm going to do. I can't remember what it was, I'll have to go back and have a look, but I might do that on some of these daffodils, on these toasty ones. So I've got some bits at the bottom of there. So I'm quite excited now. I really want to get on with my mosaic. Um, right, let's get some bits out. Let's. This was the one that was sitting on the shelf for a while. <gasps> Look, it did a bee. It is a hand-drawn bee. It has got a bit of a... Oh, this is a slightly marbled clay because it's that reclaimed still. So it's got all sorts of random bits in, you know. Little bee, just with the clear. Oh, look, honeycomb pattern with the yellow. <laughs> it looks so cute together. Look at that. <laughs> oh, I love it. And little, the little honeycomb feet as well. I think this was marigold with snow. I'm pretty sure it was. But how super cute. And they're just a slump with a raw edge, not trying to do straight. But that was, let me show you if I can find it. Excuse my back. Here it is. This one. It's just a, what's the word? Put your hot pans on, silicon pan holder stand thing. This one, that was that. And then where it had this hole, I put my stamp in. Quite pleased with that boy. Oh, I'm making a mess. Yeah, wow. Yeah, maybe I've gone up to about a five-year-old for drawing. Okay, so off to a good start. Okay, I'm gonna do this one. My shelves are a mess. Put these stilts off, yay. Good stuff, right. Okay, owie. This one's only very pale because I only did probably one coat. It's another sphere for the outside. And it's just kind of little tulipy shapes, just in pastel colours. And they kind of just all grow up from the bottom. You can't really, they are, you can see them. But this, this is quite pale, these two colours. Oh, I think that's quite cute. Just, just a little bit. I should have done more cards, but I was being lazy. I was just sitting and watching telly and just playing. But when it's just sitting in my garden with the other ones, I haven't hung them up yet. When I've put them all on, when I've put them all on, I'll take you out and show you. Right. Next, next, next. So, ooh, these are the little balls that are going with my chip and dip, which is at the bottom. So I've done the ball separately and the dips. So the chip separate to the dips because I didn't know whether to kind of glaze glue the dip in, but I kind of didn't know which dip ball to do. So I did, it's, with the coloured in dots. And I did this shape. So this is more like the chip and dip shape and this is just a 
kind of a little oval one but you might want more than one dip as well so you could use them both color on this one so one coat of vitra glaze saffron that was a glaze that i got off a guy when i got that clay reclaim and some molds and stuff so one vitra glaze saffron which is slightly more orangey than marigold you can actually see it there that's the saffron two so it's so vitra glaze saffron one then sangria about an inch in these little pots sangria about an inch around here one amaryllis all over two blossom flux all over and then just little flashes of pink opal just a few not many at all but that is rather nice, isn't it? Some places you can see the saffron coming through. Or that might be. Do you think that's part of the amaryllis? No, I don't think it is because the amaryllis is these little tips here. And the little darker ones in the bottom. But I like that. Good for a pinky. Let's hope that the, I can see the edge of it. Let's hope it survived and that uh, it matches because that would be helpful, wouldn't it? So, um, the next one, let's have a look. This, oh, good job I put it on that. It's ran. Okay, so one of my little belly jugs just been sitting for a while waiting to be glazed. Now this was two rose quartz because I just bought rose quartz. I know that it's like a bit contentious and I've had it before from the group glazes. But I wanted to have a go myself, do a little bit more with it. And actually, do you know what? I like that rose quartz. It's got my quite nice usually it's more matte and there is a little bit of a shine to that because you can see there don't mind that at all there is one two pinholes I thought my pinhole issue was more related to um ivy and verluster but this is also a slip cast so I've had pinholes with ivy and vert luster and pinholes with the slip cast stuff. So I'm not going to really slip cast much. Um, I prefer, I don't know if you've seen my video where I've done the uh, slip cast mould and I've made a vase from it slab method rather than pouring uh, casting slip into it. So my brain is so tired today. Um, so if you are interested in that it's in my playlist for tutorials and i show how i use the molds broken molds molds that have kind of passed their best or you're missing a piece you can use the the slab method or you don't want to make such a mess because i find slip casting quite messy but on the top of this and on the inside is one of the jungle jumps so I'll show you which one it is. Pink Pixie. So two cuts of rose quartz and then just one pink pixie to here. But you can see, I, and I made it specific to this line so that I could look at the run. And you can see it's come down quite a bit. Where it must have had more Sprinkles, let's call it sprinkles. Sprinkles in it. So it has, which I'll have to watch rose quartz for that. Um, but so glad I put it on this little cookie ring as a last minute thing because 
I will have to watch Will's course. But I'm actually really pleased that it's super cute. If I can get it off and grind it down a little bit, I'm going to use that in the little milk jug. Because I don't mind keeping all of the little faulty bits. They're the ones that make themselves mine. And uh, I don't mind that at all. So another piece with Dunkle Downs. Now this one was was the other one I got coral now my amaryllis I know amaryllis is the uh, coral is the base and it's Mako stoneware coral sw205 because there is another coral in the Mako coral gloss and it's not that one it's the sw205 and it was really really thick so I put some into my amaryllis to because I had loads of chips in the amaryllis and it was just coming out too chippy for me so I thinned it down by putting about a third of a pot of coral gloss in then it was just so thick I topped it up with a little water and so the coral gloss has gone really really well it's nearly full and I've topped my amaryllis off so have a look at this this was a grey scandy stoneware that again I got in that reclaim top so on a white you would probably get a bit different so there is a like a almost like a greyishness to this one and again it's that I mean it's not perfect because it's a reclaim but this is the honeycomb again so this was one big thick coral gloss was it one I'm pretty sure it was just one because it was so thick and I put it on thick and then one no two coats of jungle jams sassy orange now at cone six which I think is roughly what I'm firing to you I thought that might have run a little bit more because that pink pixie that ran and blended quite a lot. So the coral with the jungle gems, it's still coming out quite speckly. And I just, oh, it's got so many colors in. It's so beautiful. It's really fiery. There was one that was a little bit more fiery because that's an orange base and it was a sorry a yellow base and it was an orange base like more flamey so I might I might have to go back and try a few more so that's that one what do you think I'm not keen on the grey clay it kind of looks cementy and it's a little a little rough that will need sanding but still nice right down to the last shelf and I have a few bits and pieces. Oh, I actually have these I forgot about. I did, oh, what's on there? I did the other three little rabbit egg cups and it does fit an egg. I didn't bring one in to show you, but it does fit an egg. Because it's in a regular shape, the egg is not perfectly seated, but it does. So I made them in the cherries mini cherries so that um, it would be a little set of four and I think they're fine they're one little kind of irregularity there but I can forgive that so maybe two no maybe more than <laughs> a little like, irregularity on each one which just makes them unique I don't really have four people to give eggs to or else I would just keep them. Or I might keep two and I might give two away to somebody who's got, um, oh, I'm going to give one to my cousin, her little girl, uh, Matilda. She'll love a little rabbit egg cup. Good idea. That's those. And I have, let's get these ones out. So I made these little 
tiny balls with um, texture in a while ago. I made like 58 one day for some really random reason and they took all day and then I realised that they weren't deep enough to do ball experiments. So they just tip, tip, dip balls, little dip balls or a little salt or something like that. So I did one of each of the jungle gems that I got and I also had a Mako Element Chunkies. So let's see if we can work it out. This is on buff, Sassy Orange. See, I think that it's ran more in there. So it must have been a little hotter on the bottom shelf. I haven't looked at... I've been so busy looking at these, I haven't looked at the, the tip and dip ball. Right, that one. Then the pink one, that must be the pixie, pink pixie. There. But it didn't really, oh, it did bring blues out on the, it did bring blues out on the, um, the little milk jug. There, you can see but they've all blended. So that was much more vibrant, the blue in there. And this one, I mustn't have got many of the chunky sprinkles in. This is a garden one. Field of flowers. So just mustn't have got enough wrinkles in it but I got that one because I'm trying to do some greens on my mosaic because I have greens in my house so that's if the mosaic goes in the house it might go on this wall who knows I might even just mosaic this whole wall that sounds like a project so I feel the flowers and so this one by order of default must be Mako Elements Chunkies Painted desert, which is why it's kind of brown for some reason, and I have no idea why. I had the idea that it was actually more like an amaryllis color, but it's not, it's just brown and spotty. I'll find some use for it. So, right. I have, okay, well, I'll leave it and I'll just show you a couple of my, just a couple of, because I've got a few of them on the bottom. So just some of the tile pieces, mosaic pieces, as a, so that's sangria, which will go around to make uh, flower petals. You can put them in that way to make flower, or you can put them kind of round that way to make flower. I have some small versions. This is saffron, the brighter glaze, and the larger version. Oh, kind of sunflowerish maybe. Well, maybe not actually. Nothing like a sunflower, Julia. So I have a few of those. And so, last but not least, is it in one piece? Oh, it is! My chip and chip ball. Oh, wow. Look. Wow. So same glazes, one saffron vitro glaze. So you could use marigold instead. This to about here with sangria on top of the uh, saffron. Then one amaryllis all over, nice amount of chunks. This was before I thinned it down maybe even on the slightly too many chunks for me in the bottom and two blossom flux with swoops 
little swoops of pink opal of which you can kind of see a little bit I thought that it would maybe blend right down to the bottom which it doesn't seem to have even though it was all over so I think that that shallow bit here has just it's only really flowed to about here where it's flowed down but I love that. Let's have a look to see what it looks like with the... So that's what it would be like with the one. Well, this one is the nearest kind of shape. There. Or you could put in... If you're greedy for dips, you could put both in. I think I would just do one. I think I'm liking that one, but look how pretty, let me just put these down before I drop them, how pretty is that, what's that colour there, that must be, I don't know actually what of the ones that I've used, that must be Blossom Flow. Sangria, um, pink opal, saffron. I didn't put amaryllis in because of the not wanting to put chunks in these holes. But how pretty. That is just so sweet. And that is a piece for me for. In fact, I'm having a movie night tonight, so I might be a popcorn ball. It isn't made to be perfectly symmetrical. It is irregular and it was slumped over my largest mould. It did start out having a slightly different shape. It was going to be more leaf-like, but this is the shape it ended up, which is exactly how it was meant to be. Because, you know, I believe in that kind of thing. So I'm going to show you, I didn't get a chance to do the big, square ball that I showed you last time because that's going to take up like half the kiln I didn't get a chance to do my little because I have a little garlic bread plate for, for a garlic baguette didn't get a chance to do that and I have one of the ladies I'm going to show you ta -da! She is a jug. This is her little updo. She's got curls, a necklace, and a bracelet, and a little pearl ring. So I don't know what colour to do her. I guess I'm going to do a colour to here. Do I leave her arms bare and then put her bracelet on? And do I just give her like a skin colour and then different colour for the hair? What's your ideas, guys? I have some, but I would love to know what you would do. She's buff clay, so there's that to consider as well. Um, but let me know what you would do. Yeah, I don't know what colour to do this little necklace. I could try and do the necklace in metal. I was thinking pearls, but somebody made a comment to me about that. <laughs> and um, I think I might do it metal instead. <laughs> Oh, if you know, you know. It might not be funny to anybody else. Um, yeah, so. <laughs> Let me know what you think. What colour? Would you do it like in a, like some bands of colour? Try and blend it in. 
the last lady she had two colours but she had the kind of form that fit two colours she could do one colour to here because she does have a kind of a little where it bellies out she could do one colour to here and then one colour to here or a, a lighter shade and a darker shade or vice versa but I think I'll just do some clear on her face or cherry blossom or something like that that I don't think she needs to have a coloured face but do I colour that arms but that would suggest long sleeves oh excuse me so I'll put her down now pop your ideas in the comments because I need some extra help <laughs> I've got two more ladies in the uh, community kiln and they are corset ladies without giving too much of the game away and uh, yeah I'm, I'm thinking now five might be the series unless I kind of come up with a bit of inspo for six because I'm not sure five is the right number six might be better so yeah, I might because I've got, she's a jug, there was a jug and a vase, and I think the other two were vases. So maybe there should be another jug. So yeah, we'll see. Well, that should be the three of those I'm going to put in the next comb, and I don't think I'll fit much else in. Maybe some towel pieces, if I do just half off shelves and then put the three in but we'll see right I'm going to stop waffling because I've still managed to get it to 30 minutes even though there wasn't that many pieces um thank you so much for watching guys I really really appreciate each and every one of you and you know please continue to comment I love reading your comments and replying um, you're all so amazing I love you all honestly um and yeah, I think that's it. Subscribe, please subscribe. I need more subscribers. Yeah, it really, really helps my channel if you subscribe as well as watch. Um, you know, I try to put out as much as I can. Uh, I wish I could put out more, but you know, health issues. And also I'm trying to have a little teeny bit of life during the summer um, and things like that, so bye for now and I shall see you probably in another couple of weeks because I already have the ladies done and I just need to glaze them so get your comments in and uh, let me know what you think thanks very much guys see you next till oh, brain <laughs> see you until next time <laughs> bye